Steven here, and welcome back to our Best Buy data flow that we last worked on. And in the last video, we were able to complete our loop and move partly down our flow in order to continue manipulating the data and enriching it the way we want. So the only thing I've done in between now and then is I went and renamed all the processors to hopefully make it a little bit easier to understand on the screen and what they're doing. So we have the invoke API, create a flow file with the current page, uh, create a, create the uh, current page and total page attributes, uh, loop if not equal to total page, and then plus one to the current page attribute, and then split on categories, split the JSON on categories, and then create the categories ID and name attribute. Okay, so that's where we left off. Now, on the right here, we have our original API response text and a little piece of it. So we had that last time too, and I've went ahead and added the results now from the split that we have here for categories on what that output looks like. Just to have it on screen and make it easier to follow along and keep track of what we're doing here and work with it. So we know we have the ID and name now. This is the category up here, and then ID and name down below is inside of the subcategories array. And now we want to go and grab the subcategories and make those their individual flow files. And, after, and then after that, go ahead and add them to, or add a attribute for each of those uh, subcategory name and ID. And so let's go ahead and continue working on that. In order to do that, uh, now keep it in mind, one of the best things about NiFi is there's quite a few different ways you can accomplish some of the same task and how you decide to go about doing it. Some are more complicated and technical, uh, some are easier, but sometimes it can cost a little more or you have to go through a couple extra processors in order to keep it the easier way. It just depends on your level of expertise and what way you wanna do it. We're just gonna do it this way. It's a mix of both for right now. So we went ahead and did the split. We created the attributes and now we can take this result here. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm gonna take this and feed it into another split JSON processor. But before I do that, I want to strip away the category information and just have the results be all the subcategories on. <clears throat> so in order to do that, we're gonna use the jolt transform. We're gonna use a very simple method for doing that. So we'll take the, let's go grab one of these as our examples real quick. Don't wanna lose anyone. So we're gonna just take the results of one of these as our working set of data for the jolt. We're going to a jolt here. We'll go to advance. And if you're not familiar with this from before, if you haven't seen it in one of the other videos, up here is where we create our specification for the jolt transform. And then down here is where we put the inputs and then this is where our outputs will be. So we can see what our spec did. Now our spec is actually gonna be very simple and I'm just gonna copy and paste it because I already have uh, it saved on my clipboard. And this is all we're doing. We're gonna do an operation, which is a shift. The spec itself is gonna be grabbing the subcategories and inside there, we're gonna loop through each one, which is the reason for the start inside of subcategories and pull that out. So let's go ahead and check that out. And there we go. We have subcategories and then we have all of our subcategories themselves. So we can actually split on, we can actually go and do our split on that as a result, because we can do it on subcategory itself, which will then give us everything below it. Oh, my mistake. I think I forgot to click on the save button, didn't I? Yep, so let me put that back in there. We're just gonna save that. Uh, I could have just gone straight into properties here and just pasted it straight in here as well. Uh, and then we're not changing any of the default properties here, so we're good to go. Now we should be able to test this. And I have 1,700 uh, flow files from before ready to go. I don't want to waste all of them just in case I did something wrong. So I'll tell it to run every 10 seconds right now, one at a time. Should give us room to uh, stop it if there's a problem. Go ahead and move that up. And... We are good to go. So we need another processor though to feed that into and we need to handle the relationships above us. So we're still gonna just terminate the match or the unmatched and failures. That way we can use this one. 
Oh, I just ran, I just set the wrong one for discussion. This one should be 10 seconds. <laughs> you know, so and saw that. And then this one is gonna be fine. We'll leave it at 10 seconds too. We can test both of them. And I know after this, if it works correctly, we're gonna take the jolt and we're gonna put it into a route on content. And you'll see why in just a moment. All right, let's create that relationship there. Let's get rid of the failure over here. We'll go ahead and place it to the side so we have room. And let's go ahead and grab one. One made it through successfully, so the evaluate didn't give us an error. Now let's see if we got the intended result. And we have subcategories and stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> my bad. That was the attribute part. <laughs> well, let's make sure that part does work. And I think we already did in the last video, but we should have the attributes uh, on the flow file. So underneath attributes here and categories. There it is, categories. Okay, so we're good to go. Now we can take this one and put it into our jolt, get the intended result. Check it out, make sure it looks correct. And it does, we'll take a couple of those so we can just put on the side so we can see where things are. All right, so that's what it looks like now if it goes to the jolt. And then now we can go ahead and move on forward. So let's go ahead and process all these. We'll remove that 10 seconds there. Turn that back on. This is just going to slow because we have that 10 seconds in there as well. And now we can go ahead and start this. Okay, so 1700 completed. Let's take a look in the queue. We have different sizes here everywhere. Uh, we have some small ones in here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, <laughs> not very long. But it does have results. <clears throat> and then we can keep going. And I think we're okay. Everything has good size to it. So this one looks fine. All right. So actually, I don't think we need to do the route. Let's go ahead and empty everything. Or we don't need to do it yet. We don't need it right now. So we can stop this. And after we had done that, we would say, okay, well, this is where we want to go into a split, right? So let's grab another one. Feed that in there. And now we can go ahead and set subcategories as the property. Make sure we get the exact, have no spelling errors here. So we'll just copy and paste it. And this is going to be, this will be subcategory. And then I think it's just sub actually like that. That looks right to me. Oh, wait, I'm putting this wrong spot. I'm thinking about a different processor. <laughs> we had it right here. I was thinking about adding attributes. Okay, so this is correct. JSON path expression, we filled in that property, subcategories. Now let's try and see what results we get here. And I want to slow this one down. We'll say you run every second. And I'm thinking if that works correctly, then we need to do the evaluate again so we can get the subcategory and ID and name. And that's where we'll end up going next. Let's go ahead and terminate things. <clears throat> and now we can go ahead and run this. Oh, uh, I forgot. I got rid of everything, didn't I? 
Okay, let's go ahead and turn this one back on. We can send another one through. See our loop is working just fine. We already have some coming through, we got 62 already. Oh, and we have a failure, or we have an error. So let's go ahead and check that out. Let's stop this first. And see what we have going on here. So did not have valid JSON content. All right, so what's going on here? Well, let's take a look if we can. Uh, let's see. So the pattern is fork, drop, fork, drop. And we have double, we have two right here, fork, drop, drop, and fork, drop. So this one, I think is gonna be one of them. Oh, so there's a null value in here. Well, that's not good. Uh, and so the problem with the split on JSON processor is, if it comes across a, if it comes across it, the subcategory and there's no content inside the subcategory array, then it doesn't process that. It can't process it because it can't find what it's looking for. Uh, which is, if we look at our message here, it's telling us, does I have valid JSON content? And we need a handle for this. So that means what it should mean is back up here, we, what it means is we have some categories that do not have uh, subcategories to them, but we want to keep those flow files because we still have the category ID and name that we want to bring forward. It's okay if we don't have subcategories for these, but we don't want to lose them. And <clears throat> if we check this out, if I remember correctly, if we take this, we'll just route to here for right now. And we'll say, hey, send the failures here, right? That's an easy way to handle it. Give me the failures and then I'll move them down the, the line. And let's hope we can do that. Uh, so we have a couple, let's see if I can remember. Can we go to bulletin, turn off auto refresh, clear, close. And I thought that would have gotten rid of it. I thought it was supposed to. As a clear, turn all that, close. Nope, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to wait for that thing to expire. But we do know 12, okay, so 19, 12, and we've two minutes passed already, so we know we can run it and we'll be able to see if we're having problems still. Let's go ahead and start. And there we go. So we have a failure over here. And we can go ahead and take a look at it. We have four failures. No, 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 no. Okay. Now <clears throat> we can use, we can use the failure path relationship if we want to pipe it into something different from here and move it down the line. Or we can do this beforehand and we can account for it with the route on or route on content and look for null. So the result coming out of the JSON transform would be a null. We wanna grab those nulls before they go into the split and not have them even go in here. Now, my reason for doing that is uh, what I'd like to do is just not get the error at all. Uh, Cause you can see 15. So if we let it run some more, we'll get some more. There's another one right there. And you can see that even though we're, we have a relationship for failure, it still puts the red little warning up here. And I'd like to just avoid that if possible and not have that there. That way, when there is one there, I know it's for something that I'm not handling for. So I want to change things up. Uh, we're gonna empty out all the queues so we can go ahead and stop some stuff and work with them. And we'll stop the jolt. We'll take this relationship, get rid of it. We need to remove this one. And we're gonna put the route on content, content after the jolt. Oh, I forgot to grab both. Yeah, let's go a little bit more. Give us some room here real quick. Route on content, create the relationship. And then go ahead and move this over here. And move the route. So, oh, first of all, let's create it. 
And all we're going to do in here is say, let's go ahead and say uh, properties, add a new property here, no subcategory. And then all we're going to say is null, because we do know that the content of those is null. So we can just say, give us a match. And if it matches, send it this way. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, we need to, right now we'll just have a placeholder. So we'll just throw a processor out here to just test this out with. Uh, we're going to say route on here. No subcategories go here. And if it doesn't match that, then it proceeds forward. Move this down. Switch things up a little bit. Clear my space. All right, now let's go ahead and test this out and see what our results are. Uh, we want to turn the jolt back on, route, and the split has not cleared yet, but we know it's that 1916 was the last one going into it. So we can go ahead and, oh yeah, I have to handle that. I created a relationship that I got rid of. Now we can go ahead and turn this back on and everything looks like they're connected, turned on correctly. So let's see if the results are what we want now. Go ahead and start it again. Sending things through. We can see 50 already inside subcategories, 245. We have 250 down here, and let's just make sure we routed them the correct way. <laughs> I almost feel like maybe I didn't. Uh, best way to do is check it. No, okay, cool. They're all the same size, so that looks like it's working correctly. We can confirm down here that the unmatches do have subcategory content. Uh, go back. First of all, 1939. Oh, I think we need a handle for failures because we have two types of failures now. All right. Okay, well, first of all, we finished the route. We have our route on content working correctly. All the nulls are getting handled for and they're moving forward. So that's perfect. So that part works. And it looks like uh, we're at the end of our video here. So when we come back, we're gonna have to handle for a second issue here that we have going on, which is now if we look at the error, we have was not a JSON array cap uh, compatible type and cannot be split. So we'll go ahead and investigate that and see how we need to fix that and what's going on with that one exactly. All right, so I'll catch you in the next video, bye.